Thank you, Mary. Good afternoon, everybody. As Mary said, uh, I'm Jennifer Lyons. I'm from the CCBS team. Um, happy New Year to you all. Uh, it's a great pleasure to, for me to be here to introduce um, our next guest, Tony Bates, Chairman and CEO of Genesis, who will join Mary in a fireside chat. Now, I know there's quite a few uh, Connacht rugby fans in the audience who will be very familiar with the Genesis brand, as the company is proud principal partner of Connacht Rugby, a partnership that has been instrumental in building the Genesis brand as it competes at the highest level in Europe. California headquartered Genesis is a global leader in customer experience and contact center solutions. Its journey in Ireland started in 2018 with the acquisition of local startup and enterprise Ireland client AltaCloud in Galway. Genesis Galway has effectively grown from a team of 20 to become its largest R&D center of excellence for artificial intelligence in Europe, employing more than 350 people at its state-of-the-art offices in Bonham Key. Tony Bates joined Genesis as CEO in 2019. He's passionate about creating great culture and customer experience and is best-selling author of Empathy in Action. He leads the company's strategy and operations for more than 100 countries and oversees a global team of 6,000 employees. Tony has decades of experience steering companies through the major market transitions and rapid scaling. Career highlights include leading Cisco service provider business, serving as CEO and president of Skype. In addition to his role at Genesis, Tony serves on the board of directors for VMware. Before I hand you over, uh, we at IDA would like to thank you, Tony, and Genesis for your continued partnership and investment in Galway. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Tony Bates and Mary Buckley. Thank you. Good morning, Tony. Happy New Year to you. And thank you for hey. joining us uh, this afternoon at our annual conference. Yeah, it's great to be here. I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person. Um, and I can see all the audience and this lovely view uh, behind you. Uh, but uh, I'm glad to be with you. No, we're really pleased that you've taken the time to join us. It is probably 8 a.m. now in California, so starting your day. Thank you for that. And what I'd like to do really over the next 25 minutes or so, Tony, is just to talk a little bit about technology, sustainability, uh, your Galway R&D Center, and to talk a little about, about, about uh, talent, and of course, about you. So perhaps I can start then by talking about technology. Um, Tony, you've been involved in technology since the very early days of the internet, and you've seen huge changes during that time. When you look to the future, Tony, what are the kind of current, indeed the future technology developments that really excite you most? Yeah, so maybe just uh, as you mentioned, Mary, just as an uh, opener, I've been very fortunate to be involved in a couple of, I'd say, very important paradigm shifts. First, really, internet infrastructure itself, which really enabled uh, so much innovation, and then really the, the advent of the, of the communications phase. Um, and now, of course, I'm very much focused on uh, customer experience. Um, the thing that excites me the most and is so important and apropos to this, uh, your conference, is really, as we kind of enter what I, I think about as the fifth industrial revolution, the, the use of exponential technologies um, around creating use cases that really help create a much more personalized experience. And the tech that's really enabling that more than anything is, of course, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, but it's not the tech itself. It's what you're now able to do with it that I think is really important maybe for the audience to understand, which is that we're moving into an age where there's so much data uh, that's available, especially when you get to cloud technologies, that you can now start to really create truly personalized um, interactions, approaches. Uh, and that's really, really important to us at Genesis. The thing that we're most focused on is how do we create experiences that really feel personalized and empathetic, not just efficient in the interaction. And so I think we're just at really the beginning of the power of artificial intelligence. And again, I'm really focused not so much on how does it, you know, sort of do something um, 
more automated, but how do we really use this to create tremendous uh, personalized conversational interactions? And maybe just one I'll highlight for the audience that obviously is getting a lot of buzz and excitement um, for those who are following it is the work by the company OpenAI uh, and this technology called ChatGPT. But really what's important about it is less uh, the tech itself, but is, is kind of what is opening our eyes to the possibilities of doing. And so I think we're going to see that evolve very, very powerfully over the next few years. And I think in, especially uh, in the work that we do at Genesis, which is ultimately to create much more people-centric experiences and, and less focus on just business uh, efficiency metrics. So that's the one I'm most excited about right now. And I think it's got a long long way to go We're in the early innings, um, but it's really important uh, to us and it is the center of what we do in Ireland and in Galway as, as uh, the introduction mentioned. And uh, it's interesting there as you talk about AI, I'm very conscious that Genesis was one of the first companies that uh, incorporated cloud technologies and advanced analytics into your uh, customer experience solutions for that sector. Um, I'm also conscious, as Jennifer has already alluded to, to the book that you co-authored. Um, and in that book, you talk again about the customer-centric approach um, and how important that is, as you've just alluded to. Um, you also talk, though, about uh, some of the concerns and the pitfalls of having a very tech-centric approach uh, to customer engagement. Can you just talk a little bit more about that to, to us here? Because I know that you are very focused, obviously, on the tech aspect, but also, as you said, the people piece. And I know from your book, Empathy in Action, uh, that empathy is hugely important to you in building and in retaining um, customer relationships. So can you talk a little more about all of that to me? Because that's something that's obviously tech on the one hand, but the people aspect that you alluded to is critically important. Yeah, um, maybe just to step back for the, the, the audience, the book um, is called Empathy in Action, um, but what it really talks to is that the, the notion of using technology um, for technology's sake has often been sort of applied to very business-centric outcomes, let's say, um, and it's sort of a bit of a blind spot that many companies fall into, which is I have a problem... Let me throw technology at it and it will solve it for me, you know, and uh, you have all these initiatives, whether it's digital transformation, uh, et cetera, or automation. And a lot of the time, whilst it's helpful, it generally is focused on business-based metrics. How do I become more efficient? How do I become more effective? Um, how do I kind of throw more to the bottom line? But ultimately, most companies around there um, are, are really there to serve their customers and serve their customers better, right? Mm -hmm. And if you kind of step back and you say, every touch point, whether it's with my customer or my, or my employee, needs to be a delightful, personalized experience. It needs to be an engaged experience. We really untap this idea that actually the force multiplier uh, that I would urge every entrepreneur, everyone running a business to think about is this 30. So yes, you have to focus on efficiency and effectiveness that's very important but if you lose the 30 which is really empathy which is how do i listen how do i understand what you need how do i try and predict that and then learn from that um i think that you you lose sort of uh, the long-term sustainable differentiation of the business and i actually think that if you kind of use a very simple analogy that i'm sure everyone's familiar in the audience you know you get on a a, a customer service call the agent says to you, you know, oh, your call is very important to me and then puts you on hold for 40 minutes, you know, with elevator kind of music in the background. It doesn't really feel like they actually feel like you're important to them. And so what we really delve into is that there's technology, but if you don't focus it more from the customer point of view, and by the way, the employee point of view, it actually can set you back because you kind of lose the point of why you wanted to use the technology in the first place. And I would just urge folks to think about that as a deep strategic part of the way that you want to think about the culture of your company. Yes. Um, and, you know, it kind of is interesting that you think about all of the companies around the world, public and private companies, and the way they report to their boards or to their shareholders. Very rarely does anyone talk about customer satisfaction 
or net promoter score or what we call at Genesis, the experience index. And yet we know inherently that the best companies on the planet typically are the ones who provide the best experiences, both to their customers and their employees. And so this is really an paradigm shift that I think um, is not only important to understand about how you use technology, so make it people and customer centric versus business centric, but also I think it has to be from the top and a cultural um, aspect of the way that you think about driving the culture of the company. Absolutely. I'm, you've taken the words from my mouth there about the culture and uh, uh, culture eat strategy for breakfast. So you've hit the nail on the head, I think. Um, one of the areas as well, Tony, that I just wanted to hone in on is uh, here in Ireland, indeed around the globe, there has been some turbulence in the tech sector recently. Um, and so while I have you here and you obviously are California based where a lot of the turbulence has been, can you kind of just give me a view as to how you see, think the next few years will play out for tech companies? Yeah, I mean, for sure it's been turbulent and uh, I, I don't know how much you've been talking about it, but I, I, I'm sure if not on stage in the hallways and uh, yeah. in the lunches, I mean, we're in a very interesting moment. I, I've been in technology for a long time, so I was there at the internet boom bust. I worked for a company which was the largest company by market cap in the world for one day and then the kind of wheels came off the tech industry. So at one level, it's nothing new. Um, we've seen the cycle. I do think this is a particularly challenging uh, moment because obviously we've dealt with COVID, uh, global inflation, interest rates, the um, the ongoing you know uh, war in Ukraine. Um, so it's very hard to predict kind of in the short term uh, sort of with a crystal ball. So what I generally try and focus in the company is focus on what you can control. Um, I remember uh, John Chambers, actually, the CEO of mm -hmm. Cisco, saying to me um, one day, which I think is a very important lesson, is uh, deal with the world the way it is, not the way you want it to be. And so what I think you're going to continue to see um, in this sort of un, um, uncertain time that we have over the next uh couple of years is really, um, you know, trying to get as much signal, being cautious about the way you drive the growth of the business, but also balancing that to stay focused to your true core and your, and your true mission. Um, and we really are sort of underlying that, continuing to focus on driving um, a next generation cloud technology powered of AI to really drive these, 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 you know, empathetic experiences. I do think that, um, uh, this is not short term. So, uh, we are in sort of what I would call, uh, more of a wartime CEO than a peacetime CEO mode for okay. the CEOs out there. Uh, I try as much as possible, um, to get very direct feedback from my employees, uh, my partners and my customers. And I think now more than ever to really, sort of understand where things are sitting is spending that time with your customers and your partners is absolutely critical. Uh, I know in the 08 crisis, for example, the financial crisis, uh, the best advice I heard was that focus on your customers, focus on your team, um, and be sort of ready, you know, sort of ready to blaze out when you feel the signals are right. Uh, and so I think we've got a couple of years here to kind of pace through. Um, you know, we're definitely in a time that is is unprecedented in many ways. Uh, but the most important for the important thing for the leaders is to keep your team uh, focused on what they can control and not getting too distracted with the outside thing of it. The last thing I just say, because as you mentioned in California, uh, you know, there's quite a lot of headlines. Obviously, there's been a um, some layoffs uh, and. Uh, there's been a big pivot from sort of growth to profitability. I think that that, you know, will continue. Um, but uh, Silicon Valley in particular has a way of kind of beating those odds in some ways. You will see uh, a whole number of new companies emerge, a whole number of new technologies. The same thing happened in 08. The same thing happened after the uh, boom bust um, cycle of the Internet. And so I'm, you know, frankly, quite optimistic, but at the same time, need to be uh, uh, planful and cautious until we understand where things are moving a little bit. Thanks, Tony. And I can see that thread there of the 
uh, customer in everything that you've said so far, uh, and it is something that would resonate very strongly with my colleagues here in IDA. We know that for the times ahead, particularly uh, in this challenging global economic environment as well, that we want to stay very close to our clients, um, and that is very much the strategy that we will be taking. So that's very good that it's reinforced for us by you. Um, can I just ask you also then about another area that Genesis uh, has a very strong goal and focus on, which is to be carbon neutral by 2030. Um, can you give us really a flavor about sustainability and how you address it through your business practices? Yeah, uh, I think this is an incredibly important topic. Um, uh, and this goes beyond any one company, but uh, just to outline uh, Genesis strategies you mentioned, um, we take a very strong position uh, to be carbon neutral by 2030. And I think that uh, we're really well on track to do that. Now, you know, we're a cloud-based company, and so we do get to take advantage of some of the, the large hyperscalers are also committed to this, so that's very helpful. Um, but look, we do business in over 100 countries, um, and so it's really important that we sort of move those those countries along with the same kind of initiative that we're focused on. We have a very big initiative around hybrid workforce. Uh, we have a very big focus on sort of making sure that everyone in the company not only understands how important this is for the climate, um, but how strategic it is to the company. And what I would... Uh, urge everyone um, out there is if you don't make this a top level business goal, a KPI that's read out to the board, that's read out to my um, leadership team, every whatever your cadence for your operations review is, it won't happen. And so we've decided to make it uh, a front burner strategic topic, not one of those things that, you know, maybe you put on a PowerPoint or you put in the elevator, but measure this each and every day and make sure you're making um, sustainable progress towards the end goal of it. And so we, we focused very heavily on that. Um, I'm really proud of the new Bonham Key um, uh, facility. It's, it's basically uh, uh, our showcase, frankly, across all of Genesis. I, I, when I went out there, um, we did the opening and we had the pleasure of yourself, Mary, um, uh, uh, a number of folks I'm sure in the audience, the T shook himself as well. Uh, what I was most proud of not only was the community that we created uh, in Galway and the power of the of the talent there, but also uh, a sustainable facility, uh, a lead certified facility moving forward. So you have to focus it across everything you do, um, and I think we can get there. Um, but what we have to do is not lose sight of it, given all the turbulence that we talked about earlier. And so if you kind of Talk about it, but don't have it as a front burner business metric. Uh, it's easy for it just to become speak versus action, and you have to focus on that. Tony, that's great because uh, it was a nice segue into my next question. You mentioned Bonham Key and you mentioned Galway, um, and obviously your R&D center is based there. Um, can you give us a sense of how Bonham Key and your research center plays into the future direction, really, of Genesis? Yeah. I mean, first, I, I just want to say, uh, again, I wish I was there. Um, I mean, it's one of the most beautiful, not only facilities, but frankly, from my point of view, Galway itself. And, and uh, I would encourage everyone, out, if you get a chance to come by Bonham Key, we'd love to have you, host you, explain what we do there. Um, but Bonham Key goes beyond just being a beautiful place for us. It's, it's the strategic heartbeat of R&D for us in Europe. Um, we are incredibly lucky to have an incredible strong leader, as was mentioned at the beginning, that the real um, nucleus of, of the work and effort, and, and thank you to IDA for helping us with all of this, uh, was the acquisition of Alto Cloud with some very passionate entrepreneurs who not only um, were very talented, had this vision that you could put AI at the center of the future of customer experience. And so it's sort of three prongs for us. One, it's a massive talent magnet, uh, not just uh, in Ireland, but throughout all of Europe. Um, so that's the first thing. Secondarily, it really is uh, the type of culture um, and community 
that we really want to drive across the whole of the company. Um, and so that's very powerful. But third is the most important is it's a strategic long-term uh, important center for us at the heart of that strategy of what I talked about at the beginning, which is how do you drive more uh, people-centric approaches to everything you do? And we have you know world-class talent, data scientists, design thinkers, some of the best cloud engineers in the world there. And as was mentioned, we've been able to grow very, very rapidly. Uh, uh, Mary, your team has been instrumental in helping us do that helping us attract talent, staying very connected. Um, and we frankly couldn't have done it without you and the team. And so it will continue to grow. Um, we will continue to invest heavily in there. Um, and it, as I mentioned, um, you know, it's the benefits of, of what's happened in Ireland. It's the benefits of how you helped us there. And now we really have this critical mass to go drive it. So it is absolutely um, as strategic as it gets for Genesis. Uh, and, and I think the thing that it's, really um if i could sum it up in one way that is the most important is back to kind of what i started is the community uh when you're there when you're in the building as you've been and you're around the team there's just a sort of an energy and an excitement for the mission that we're on um and that's palpable and that's something that's hard to create in a company of six thousand people if it's like uh galway is at, is at the root of what we do at the heart of what we do uh, and yet they have all this autonomy to go drive really, really fast and innovate really, really quickly. And that is something that uh, uh, is really important to the company and we're going to continue to invest in. Tony, thank you for those compliments. And absolutely, the team are terrific and they very much enjoy working with Genesis. The partnership has been really, really strong. Tony, I, I think as well, um, it's... Uh, interesting the way you obviously talk about Bonham Key and the team there. It is fabulous the growth that has taken place and the quality jobs, as you've already alluded to. I had the pleasure of meeting you in 2018. You had just joined Genesis yeah. and I met Joe Smith and the team in uh, California. So to see what we saw earlier on in the year is just phenomenal growth and a phenomenal commitment to Ireland. And we thank you uh, and Genesis very, very much for that. Um, you also mentioned community, Tony, and um, uh, I think it's very important that we hone in on Jennifer's comments around Connacht Rugby and your sponsorship of that, because certainly it has, you know, it's clear to everybody that you are involved in the community and that you're doing great work there. Uh, EDI is hugely important to Genesis as well, so I think it's wonderful to see that you sponsor both male uh, rugby team in Connacht, but also the female team, and so it's it's the whole, uh, it's all of Connacht rugby, which is fabulous to see. Uh, I just want to compliment you on all of that and to let you know I am a Munster supporter, but we won't hold that against you. Um, uh, are you a rugby player, Tony, and how did you get into uh, sponsoring Connacht rugby? Well, I did play rugby at school, uh, but I'm, I'm not really big enough uh, and strong enough to really say <laughs> I'm a rugby player. Um, uh, but the, the, the kind of um, journey is very uh, interesting and I think very important to uh, this broader topic, which is that um, what it represents for us isn't just, you know, oh, some presence in the local community uh, and get our logo on a, on a shirt so that, you know, people know who Genesis is. Um, yes, that's a benefit. But as you mentioned, I think the thing that was so attractive uh, to me about Connor is actually what you just mentioned. It's about the great uh, women and men, right? One of the, the, the teams that's really representing both. So what it represents to us is a community that's diverse and diversity is yet another top level initiative in the company. Just as I mentioned about sustainability, we have made commitments that if you go read our ESG report, it's right there about where we want to have uh, in terms of uh, female representation, leadership, underrepresented uh, um, uh, uh, um, communities as well. And so I think that it's, it's a much bigger topic than just a rugby and getting um, um, some sponsorship. The culture and community, and I've, I've been very lucky to meet the leadership of Connor and meet some of the, the players, um, is exactly the same culture and community that we want to create 
not only within the uh, um, Galway and Bonham Key team, but across the whole uh, of Genesis. Um, and so we were really excited. I got very lucky uh, um, in my early part of my tenure. Uh, an opportunity came up for the sponsorship and we jumped at it. We did it very quickly um, and we continue to want to, uh, uh, you know, represent, but also continue to drive some of the, the local initiatives in the community. And so I love that aspect of, of the team. I love the fact that it's, it's the women and men uh, together united and it's both teams. Uh, but more importantly, I love how that then helps us get deeper into the community. And we're involved, as you know, in, in some local charity work and continue to drive some very important initiatives um, locally. So it's a very important aspect of, 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 of the company. And maybe what I'd say, it's the only one of its kind. Uh, we aren't doing any of these other sponsorships in other parts okay. of the world. So it's back to what I said earlier. It has to fit all of the, the key criteria. It has to fit with the values that we're looking for. It has to represent diversity. But it also has to um, fit with the kind of communities that we uh, we want to uh, work with. So it's it's been a wonderful partnership so far. Uh, that's great, and it's very clear to see as well, Tony. Uh, we're just down to the last minute now, Tony. So I uh, want to make uh, as much of the time that I have as I can. And so I just wanted to ask you, uh, as chairman and as CEO of Genesis, where will you focus your time during 2023? Yeah, it's a little bit of what we talked about uh, at the beginning. I, I want to continue to focus uh, on understanding what our customer needs are. Ultimately, I think that's the, the true barometer. Uh, it is an area as a leader, I think you have to stay very engaged with your employees. I mean, employees aren't feeling, you know, there's, um, as certain as they were maybe, you know, a few years ago. And so I generally spend a third of my time with customers a third of my the time of the internal team and a third of my time sort of on the strategy and the product side. Um, and I'm going to keep pushing, keep pushing innovation within the company uh, and, and driving the values. Maybe to end, there's three big cultural values at the company and they're, they're simple, but I think important. Number one is embrace empathy. And that really does mean giving everyone a voice in the company, at least a chance to be heard. So you've got to create that uh, employee engagement feedback loop. But then once we make a decision uh, is the second big value, which is fly in formation. Um, and I like the analogy more than anything of when you see birds migrate because they really symbiotically know who should take the lead role at a certain moment and so on. And so we really try and drive that. And then the last um, uh, value is continue to go big. So as much as we need to be careful, I don't want to stop um, – innovation and aspirational thinking to push the boundaries, the exponential technologies that are available to us can now go drive. So that's kind of the way I'm thinking about 2023. Um, you know, and again, focus on what you can control uh, and deal with the world the way it is, not the way you would like it to be uh, in uncertain times. Tony, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us here uh, this morning for you and this evening for us. We really, really appreciate it. Um, and particularly because I know that you're stuck in the middle of the flooding in San Francisco. So it's a very challenging time for you. Uh, and again, demonstrating your commitment to us and your generosity of time by being able to spend some time with us. On behalf of the board, uh, of our stakeholders, and all of our team from ID Ireland here today, we thank you and we thank Genesis for your ongoing commitment to Ireland and the economic benefit that you bring. And I'd particularly like to thank you for your time with us this afternoon. I think you've left us with a lot of food for thought. So thank you very much, Tony, and we wish you a very good uh, day. Thank you. Take good care. Thank thanks, Mary, and thanks to the IDA. Uh, thank you. Good to see you. Hope to see you soon. Hope to see you soon indeed. Thanks, Tony. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye.